So very good morning, everybody. Uh, today is the third day of our uh, presentations and also the last day for semester four students uh, to make their presentations. Uh, also check somebody in the YouTube, the sound is going or not, so can ascertain that. Okay. Uh, and in this, uh, in today's uh, session, we will have presentations uh, on African literature. Let me share a screen to see the topics and the students who are going to make presentations. Okay. Uh, first of all, we will have Amina uh, reading on a study of themes uh, in Chinua Achebe's Vulture, followed by Bhavna's presentation on neocolonialism in Petals of Blood. Thereafter, Druvita will read on the role of class and culture in shaping Nuz uh, Ego's experiences in the joys of uh, motherhood. Uh, Dwani will read presentation on the war and violence in Ad Adichie's Half of a Yellow Sun. Uh, Divya Parmar will read on myth in Wallace Oenka's A Dance of the Forest. Divya Sheta's presentation will be on reading eco-criticism in the play, A Dance of the Forests by Wallace Oenka. Emisha's presentation on live burial, survival in the face of adversity or oppression. Himanshi's presentation on thematic study of the poem, You Laughed and Laughed and Laughed by Gabriel Okara. And Hinaba's presentation on uh, post-colonialism in Gabriel Okara's poem, Piano and Drums. The last one will be by Hirwa, a study of feminist prospects in Petals of Blood. Uh, let me again remind, this is the last presentation and let me remind that when you make your title, capital letters, you have to be very careful about. Many of you are still not following that pattern of key words to be capitalized. If there is a text, then it should be in single denoted comma. And you have to be very careful about the space also. For example, in the first one, uh, uh, there is inverted comma space V. There should be no space there. So this all you have studied in research methodology paper about spacing, about uh, 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 punctuation marks. Uh, that, But it is still not followed as a practice. So you have to be very careful uh, that everything that we study is followed as a practice also. Uh, every time reminding the same thing doesn't look good. This is uh, the fourth uh, uh, season. Today is the last day. <laughs> now we can't improve over this now. We don't have any capacity <laughs> to make you uh, write your topics or titles at least uh, in a correct manner. If after this many reminders, if you are not improving, I don't know how uh, now it can be done. <laughs> Uh, this. So, uh, I hope on the last day I won't have to make a comment about at least topics. <laughs> Forget about the presentations and other things that is going on in there. But still here we find that simple things are forgotten uh, and uh, not put into practice uh, also. So, I hope now, well, now it is up to you because now we are not going to meet for the presentations and I cannot identify your mistakes to rectify that. It will be up to you whether you are able to identify your own mistakes and errors or not. Otherwise, uh, the way you perform, you will keep on performing uh, subsequently when you become either teacher or whatever uh, in your uh, life. Okay, so uh, let us start with the uh, the first uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, Amina, yes, you can come and you can start with uh, the first one.
good uh, good morning everyone my topic is a study of themes in genoa uh, archives world table of content uh, yes sir My topic is a study of themes in Chinu Ajebe's poem Vulture. Table of content about the author, descriptive of poem, themes, conclusion, and work cited uh, about the author. Chinu Ajebe's full name is Albert Chinua Mugo Ajebe, born uh, November 16, 1930, and he died on March 21, 2013. He is a Nigerian novelist and uh, his unsentimental de uh, depiction of social and psychological disorientation and accompanying in, in the imposition of Western customs and values upon the traditional Africa. His particular concern was uh, about the African and its movements and its crisis. His novel range in the subject matter of uh, African village with the white people to educate Africans attempt to create a firm moral order out of changing the values in a large city. Uh, his famous, uh, his works are uh, Things Fall Apart is the first novel of, of uh, Gino Achebe, then the No Longer Is, Heir of God, A Man of People, and Hills of Savannath. And uh, he has published short story and even uh, uh, books for children. How the leopard got his clothes. Be aware of soul brother. Uh, and he are uh, the collection of poetry and he combines essays and poems by Achebes with photographies by uh, Robert Lyons. And his famous essays are Morning Yet on Creation Day, Hopes, Home and Exile. This uh, and he got in 2017. He won the Man Book uh, Man Booker International Prize. Uh, in from a uh, brief explanation of poem, the poem is divided into four sections. The first section is about the vulture. The second section is about the nature of love, and third section is about the commandant and his life. And the last section is about the conclusion of the poem. Um, the poem starts with a dual gloomy setting. Uh, it is a grey dawn, uh, dip, isn't diffused even by vulture preach on the uh, branches of uh, dead tree. Uh, it's uh, the poem starts with a description of vulture. Uh, there are two uh, of them, preemptively met nested close together and one of them as a people on a steam tangled with an uncapped uh, feathers. Yesterday, those vultures have found a corpse in a trench and had picked away his eyes and eaten everything of its bowel. In first stanza, we can see that uh, in first part, we can see that uh, the description of vulture is given that how it's uh, how the human mindset have the idea of that, how vulture is and how it looks and that in the uh, second part, uh, the description uh, switches to the after vulture is go, goes to the thoughts about the uh, peninsular uh, peninsulality of the love. It is a strange at how love, which uh, which is otherwise so particular, can exist even the strange places when it does not refers and turns its face wall rather than it looks darkness that surround it. And then in the third stanza, the poem shifts to the, the Belson camp. The commandant who uh, who at the time is finishing the work and going home to his child, uh, he smells like a burnt body and stops at the sweet, uh, sweet shop to buy the chocolates for his child. And, and he's here, who is eagerly waiting for him to return. In final stanza, we can see that uh, 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 talks about there is always a light in the darkness and love is evil. And the poet wonders if should he praise that even a giant is gifted with a tiny bit of tenderness, a soft glow, it's otherwise cold and emotionless heart or whether it should be disappeared at or a, sm a small pack of love, we find a huge amount of evil. Um, 
the themes which i'm going to discuss is first is nazism uh, according to mariam webster dictionary nazism means the body of political and economic doctrine leads and put into the effect by nazis in germany from 1930 to 1945 including the totalitarian principle of government especially germanic group assumed to be racially uh, superior in supremacy of the leader next is i've taken from britannica nazis journey operated more than thousands of concentration camp territories uh, and the first camp was uh, established on march 1930 immediately after adolf hitler became the ch uh, chancellor of chancellor of germany uh, the theme which i have applied in the poem uh, the line from the poem is thus the commandant at the belsen camp going home for the day with the uh, fumes belsen camp is a nazis concentration camp that supervised a uh, brutal torture of thousands of uh, jews burning smell of uh, human flesh forcefully enters in the nostrils of commandant and commanders do this job uh, do this as a part of his job and in the next line of poem we can uh, see that he is also a family man who goes to meet his child or family next is the vulture as a metaphor uh, as we have seen that human have a very scary and dangerous concept in mind of vulture but uh, poet tries to tell that vulture it you uh, vulture it humans after it's dead and that's the part of their lives but uh, men are killing humans at the part of their job if we see in the real sense that uh, humans are more harmful or merciless than birds uh, so here vulture is used as as the metaphor that vulture are far better than humans and humans can do anything for money or as a part of their job ecology vulture is uh, seen as an example of ecology in the poem vulture plays an extremely important role in keeping their native ecosystem healthy vulture prey upon the de dead body of animals and humans it removes waste from ecological system and it's uh, allowed to thrive in a healthy environment in poem we can see that commandant is uh, kills other uh, human beings as a part of his job and poet tries to tell that he has ability uh, the commandant has ability to choose that whether he wants to kill or not is in his hands but he cho chooses to be evil commandant chooses to be evil vulture eat as the uh, vulture eats as a part of their food and this instinct but it is something that he choose to do commandant has to commandant has choices to be good or bad but he chooses to be evil and vultures prey upon uh, dead animals and that's a part of the system in this uh, theme we can see that um, the poet tries to tell that uh, commandant was having choices what he wants to do but he chooses to be evil because he to be the part he is also a family man we can see in the further stanza that uh, he is taking care of his family and children but uh, in this as a part of he is also killing the human beings next is humanism in the first sense of appearance of vulture it looks that uh, it's ugly looking bird eating the eating in ugly way the vulture cruelty of sitting on the branch and seeing the of the dead tree and having eye on the dead body in next lines we can see the cruelty of commandant uh he kills the jews and keep in the charnel house uh, here we can see that animals are are not cruel they, they does things are the part of the system but humans are are cruel because they have ability to think and go on the part of good or evil but they choose to be evil in their own choice humans are having humans are having sense while birds do not have what here what is good and what is bad but human do have sense that what is good or what is evil but in this uh, poem we can see that commandant chooses to be evil by his choice and uh, vulture uh, vulture doesn't does not have the sense that what he cho he should choose and he is doing this as a part of his system uh, uh, scavenger concept of vulture in human mind is dangerous and scary flesh eater attacker and ugly and evil the lines which i have picked up from the poem is full glow cover sheet they chose their roast branch keep the hollow dug out 
run and in easy range of sole telescopic eye humans are the real scavengers in the poem the commandant were killing as a part of their jobs and they even don't look at them and become merciless and kills human as a part of a job in this we can see the capability to kill versus capability to live in commandant's life commander um, commandant kill humans are the part of his job in third para we can see that commandants go home in and in the middle he buys the sweets for his children as uh, his child is waiting for his daddy he only has love for his children not for the other humans he even love he has even love for his child and he even kills anyone as a part of job so here we can see both the things capability of love what is capability of killing the humans love and life and duty life vulture prey dead bodies for their appetite and commandment skill for his benefit so these are the five things which i have discussed uh, in the novel sorry in the poem this is my book citation and thank you Ecology and ecology point. Can you throw more light on ecological concern, ecological concern? Yes. So, as I have discussed, discussed in the slide about the vulture, that vulture prey, uh, prey, because is the his is is the part of his life. And uh, in this, we can see that commandant is killing the other people. He is he was having the choice whether to be good or whether to be evil, but. Uh, vulture do not have that type of sense like humans so he is doing as a part of ecology ecology and he is killing the he is eating the dead animals uh, and humans not the uh, like I mean, my question is the uh, poet is very concerned about the ecology approach through the vulture uh what is your view on in this point of view the poet is very concerned about the ecology approach to vulture can you elaborate yes as per uh, in the poem we can see that poem uh, poet has uh, said mostly about the vulture he has seen vulture as an ecology he has uh, shown human as an evil or uh, he is trying to tell that humans are having all type of senses while virtue and he does this as a part of his activity while he uh, uh, while this commandant is doing as a part of his job and he is also having ability to think whether to do right or wrong but virtue are uh, not having so thank you
Uh, hello everyone. Uh, today is my topic on uh, neocolonialism in patterns of blood. Then points to ponder about author about novel and what is neocolonialism and what is uh, neocolonialism in Africa and uh, neocolonialism patterns of blood conclusion and citations about author. So Nugiva Thiango was born in uh, Limuru, Kenya in 1938. Uh, Nugi is a novelist, dramatist, essayist, short story writer, a journalist, and critics. And his popular Weep Not Child uh, was the first major novel in uh, English by an East African. Uh, one of the uh, leading uh, African writers and scholars uh, at uh, work today. He is the author of Weep uh, Not Child, The River of uh, River Between a Grain of uh, Wheat, Homecoming. Petals of Blood, uh, Devil on the Cross, uh, Mati, uh, uh, Matigari, uh, Decolonizing the Mind, uh, Moving the Center and Dreams. And uh, uh, Nugi's numerous honors are uh, East African Nobel Prize, uh, UNESCO First Prize, and uh, Lotus Prize for Literature, and uh, Fenlon uh, Nichols Prize for uh, Artistic Excell Excellence and uh, Human Rights about novel uh, Petals of Blood uh, by uh, written by Nugiva Thiango and uh, uh, it is published in 1977 and uh, uh, setting in uh, Kenya after independence and uh, uh, there are two language uses uh, English and uh, Gikiyu and uh, uh, there are uh, four uh, protagonists in this novel uh, Wanja, Munira, Abdullah and Karega and uh, what is neocolonialism so the term neocolonialism uh, generally represents the actions and uh, uh, effects of uh, certain uh, remnant features and agents of the colonial era in uh, a given society. Neocolonialism refers to a, a continued uh, economic and political dominance uh, of former colonial powers over their former colonies, uh, even after the colonies have gained political independence. According to Kruma, uh, uh, neocolonialism is a, a form of imperialism uh, in which the former colonial powers use uh, economic and political means to maintain control over their uh, former colonies. This includes maintaining economic dominance through unequal trade agreements, controlling to supply of raw materials and uh, using them to keep countries in a state of independence. Uh, Kruma argued that uh, neocolonialism is a more subtle and uh, sophisticated form uh, of colonialism as it is operates uh, through indirect means uh, rather than through direct military interventions. Uh, he writes, uh, neocolonialism is not a sudden uh, event, a mere hiccup in the history of imperialism. Uh, it is a phase in the uh, development of imperialism and uh, for this reason, uh, it has its roots in the uh, preceding uh, phases of colonialism, the neocolonialism in Africa. So, uh, uh, neocolonialism in Africa uh, is similar to colon uh, colonialism because it results from unregulated aid, trade, and uh, uh, foreign investment, uh, as well as the collaboration between African and foreign leaders. Uh, however, it dis uh, regrets disregards the uh, development, uh, sustainability, uh, poverty reduction, and well-being of African countries and people. The asymmetrical relationship between African states and foreign leaders leads to uh, dependence rather than interdependence. Uh, and this relationship uh, priorities the interest of foreign leaders and African leaders, uh, while African countries and their uh, people do not benefit for, from sustainable development. Neocolonialism in patterns of blood. Uh, the novel is set up uh, as an investigation into the murder of three uh, Kenyans who have profited from neocolonialism, uh, Kimeria, Chui, and Zigo. Uh, they represented the institutions of the new society. Uh, the businessmen, school ad administrators, uh, clerics, uh, and uh, legislators. Uh, they are perhaps too ins uh, insistently when you to be fully uh, believable characters, uh, but they provide plenty or opportunity for Googie 
to demonstrate the uh, hollow nature of capitalism and the insensitivity uh, of its processes their counterparts parts are karega vanja and abdulla uh, we see karenga finds a voice for his progressively uh, radical uh, radicalized political marxist view and uh, become insistent upon the uh, role the uh, community must play in its own uh, regeneration uh, we observed the forces that uh, lead vanja to prostitutes uh, prostitutions are uh, forces uh, that offer her few alternative to the self-defensive uh, poster that shapes her life under the new system. We further recognize the uh, de uh, degradation of Abdullah from his former glory as a Mauma warrior uh, to his present life as a near beggar. Then uh, conclusion, uh, Petters of Blood is a powerful critic of uh, neocolonialism in Kenya. Then the novel portrays how uh, neocolonialism operates through the uh, exploitation of uh, the poor and uh, marginalized, and uh, he, it suggests that the post uh, independence government is uh, complicit in uh, perpetuating the same oppressed oppression uh, that existed under colonialism. And uh, these are what cited. Your presentation is based on neocolonialism. What are your views of um, in this talk, neocolonialism? Uh, neocolonialism is uh, often achieved to, uh, through some uh, economic dominations and uh, uh, this uh, also a relationship uh, that uh, favor of. Uh, 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 developed uh, other countries and uh, uh, can be also uh, involves uh, political uh, control. How do you connect to Mama or Rebellion in patterns of blood? Yes, uh, also. Yeah. In Petas of Blood, uh, Abdullah also joined uh, Mau Mau rebellion in. Uh, uh, he joined uh, Mau Mau rebellion in the. Uh, uh, also warrior of uh, this uh, uh, rebellion.
Hello everyone, myself Druvita Thamilia. This is our last in, last day of the presentation, which was in Af African literature. This is the topic, the role of class and culture in shaping New York's experience in choice of motherhood. Buchi M. Cheta is the Nigerian writer and uh, write, was a Nigerian writer. She was only, she is mainly focused on the difficulty and unequal role of women in both immigrant and African society and explore the tension between tradition and moral modernity. M. Cheta's work introduced three th major themes, the quest for equal treatment, self-confidence and dignity as a woman. Much of her fiction has focused on a sexual politic politics and racial prejudice and is based on uh, her own experience as both a single parent and migrant woman who live in Britain. M. Chetta's writing document the author's multi-layered yet interesting identities, the diasporic single woman, the sociologist observing grim urban realities, the best-selling novelist, the narrator of African myth and tradition that clash against modernity, the recreator of content Continent is enslaved traumatic historical past. M. Cheta's attention to gender and racial differences is therefore always coupled with her investigation of how this overlaps with education, poverty, and enslavement in women's quest towards self-determination and empowerment. Because of his concern towards self-characterization of a black woman, she always used the word womanist rather than feminist. Introduction of the novel. According to Stanley Urdu, the Joyce of the Motherhood is the feminist novel and advocate the theory of feminism. This gospel with the customized to the needs of black and African American people, include men, women, and children. It also looks at African women's problem historically, taking into consideration racial, cultural, national, economic, and political challenges, as well as sexiest one with the ultimate objective of protecting the existence and unity of all black African groups. Buchi M. Cheta accepts this womanist gospel in the joys of motherhood, addressing sexist treatment of women as well as racial issues, national, political, patriarchal, culture, and economical condition of the character. The novel, uh, multi-faced approach to women issue, underscores the need for men, women, and children to work together to survive at the, at the end of the novel. The joys of the motherhood, the novel, at the starting of the novel, we come to a novel open with the character of Nuigo, who is attempt to suicide as she is not able to uh, save her child. As her ch she, After a long time, she get, got pregnant and uh, the, due to her poverty, she is on the work and her, when she returned, he found her child, she found her child died. So she decided that now I am not able to fulfill the responsibility as African believe that woman's resp responsibility is to give a birth of the child and take care of the child. So Noel start with the scene that she is attempt to suicide. New York's simple dream of becoming a mother, a dream rooted in cultural value of ego society, where motherhood is the primary source of woman's self-esteem and public status in happily realized several times over in his new setting. The pleasure associated with motherhood that the protagonists so eagerly anticipate, however, are ultimately neg neglected by the difficult economic condition of a new urban environment. In short, there are so her husband, the knife, who hadn't have a permanent job, though he had no worry. But the woman, Nuigo, is uh, working and lost, lose her child. So she has a uh, blame for the incident and a uh, Naifel leave her and uh, she she is thinking that now she has no life so she decided to attempt suicide. The novel focusing on the grueling battle, a battle that ends in a loss of for Nuigo. At the end, uh, she uh, in, in the whole novel she she is trying to be motherhood. She is proving herself as the best mother. But at the end of the novel, she is the alone as her child grow and uh, living start living uh, their own life according to their own term and condition according to their career and the place they want to live. Modern Africa, Africa, place of women versus cultural value. Africa has decided some 
not Africa, but the colonizer had decided some rule and the term of living life for the woman. In low custom and social order, the colonial experience in Malawi and Zimbabwe indicate the white people during colonialism severely condemn African sexual morality and woman status. They were considered to have no sexual moral at all. According to colonizer, that African women have a no moral in sexuality. For example, Lomwe people of Central Africa were described their morality so low, adultery was not considered an offense. It was also reported about the woman of the manga and that the chastity of women on their feeling on the subject is not considered. It is their custom to occasionally change wife. They believe that the men, the men who have a more wife, they are more richer. They have a right to choose more, more than one wife. Another area on which African women's morality was decided was the dressing style. Uh, colonizer decide the way of dressing for the African people as they have to uh, dress up themselves as a uh, British do, did. So they uh, feel that they are superior than the African people. Role of women played in ego society according to Nigerian people or African people. Teresa Direction write in her, his, her article that as Kemen Okunzo points out the popular belief that African women were important and or trivial in the male dominated community of Igbo culture is a gross misconception. While men's labor was widely considered to be more prestigious than women's labor and while practice of polygamy and patriarchal domicile married women dwelling in their husband's village rather than their own secure men's power over women's general. Igbo women still consider influence both within their marriage and with the larger community. Women, for example, were a major force in society, economy. they have planned their own crops, sold their crops, and they have to, they have no right to choose husband also. In Igbo pre claims like the woman's only role is to give a birth to the child. If wife, uh, woman is not capable to give a birth to a child, then they are failing in the Igbo society's rule. Yeah. In the novel, how character of Nuigo is portrayed, like according to Hiren Kumar, Buchi and Cheta applies Western feminist ideology of motherhood. At the starting of the novel, we know that Nuigo is only concentrating on the how she she proved herself as a best mother, as her, her mother also facing same problem that she is not able to become mother. Then Nuigo also have a same problem that she is not have a child and when she got child he died then uh, he married a uh, second time with the knife she got a child and then she uh, believed that uh, money is nothing but the, if i have a money and poverty cannot both the connect with the child if i want child then i have to live up in poverty Nuigo who enjoy her life being a mother of many children in order to have a comfortable old age. She thought that if i have a more child i will be more comfortable in my old age but uh, the thing is not going in this way. When uh, she was asking to her, her husband that give me money for the uh, survival of the child, as they are su suffering from the poverty. Then her husband says that I am not giving you penny because I haven't penny to give you. And when she again asked, then it is your responsibility to feed your children as best you can. These words indicate the woman is a slave of men. She is subject of oppression by patriarchal society. New ego has experience of marginalization and oppression as a mother in M. Jata's view of the African patriarchy. Motherhood of the new ego. It is important to access the meaning of motherhood for the new ego. For according to new ego, the only role of woman is to give a birth to the child. She believes that woman who is a fertile is seen as a commodity because she is a means for her husband to express his virility and role in community. For her role, for her all the women stand to gain from motherhood is to comfort to knowledge, knowing she will be cared for by her children and community in the, her old age. New ego is also come to a belief that only son are asset to the ego society. She had remained herself of the old saying that money and children don't go together. If you spend all your time making money and getting rich, the God we wouldn't give you any children. If you want children, you had to forget money and be content to be poor. It is this kind of a generalization that keep new ego in the life of poverty. She believes mother is the only ticket our misery. Because of the new ego so readily accept the belief different from the Ogba description, she lost all self-identity outside of the what she accept to be her role as a woman. As will be seen, new ego never assumed the role of midwife or 
she never dares to dream of those standards for herself. Instead, she became complete within the stiffing self-image. In this way, motherhood became her prison. M. Jata portrayal of motherhood is the one that doesn't provide prestige or comfort, but rather one that continues to rob New York of tools to cope with her new colonial surroundings. <clears throat> In the entire novel, she is struggling with the, her child and getting the uh, money for her child and uh, making her child a comfortable life. But at the end, when she uh, dying, she is the alone. There is nobody to close or uh, to hold his, her hand and uh, take care of her. At the end, she says, that, I was born alone, I shall die alone. What have I gained from all this? Yes, I have many children, but what do I have to feed them on? On my life, I have to work myself to go on to look after them. I have to give them my all. And if I am lucky enough to die in a peace, I have I even have to give them my soul. Conclusion. At the end, we can say that uh, Rad, um, motherhood uh, in the novel, Nui does not try to enjoy the title, but she is trying to gain the motherhood. So she, in the process of the gaining, she is not able to enjoy the motherhood. Here in the novel, M. Chetta criticized the African idea that a motherhood, the woman have no identity. She had the only role as a mother or as a wife, not as a woman. So novel ends with the iron, irony that uh, whatever she is doing all entire life, she is not get nothing in the end of the life. These are my citations. Thank you. to you is a suppressed voice of african society yes according to me as a from the starting she is only dreaming about being mother being for being the rule of the equal society made the rule according to the rule uh, colonizer made for them she is not ever trying to out of trying to get out of this so yes she is So, uh, how does New York's social class influence her experience as a mother in the choice of motherhood? She is the first time she married with the guy where uh, he lost his child. In second time, when she married with the knife, when uh, they both are uh, married on the terms, they both both not from same community. So. They are failing uh, many kind of uh, issues, social issues. While uh, when Naife and uh, Nuhigo were uh, Nugas too much religious after the lost uh, his first her first child, she is always uh, in the uh, like he always care for the Naife. If she thought that if Naife leave her, then what will be uh, her her children do after that? As Naife uh, get go into army. Then she also met, uh, let write letter to her that send us money. They are not able to survive. Their child, then she start working. And a lot, like, like that, she always struggling with the poverty and the attention from the knife and the society. Okay, so uh, in your presentation, you have put this, you know, the, the format that you have adopted, you can see it here, no problem, uh, is about uh, uh, this, that, uh, you are putting the name of the one whose reference you are taking, and then there is a paragraph given on each and every side, that, and then that is cited there. Now, uh, that is, at the initial stage, that is fine, that you are referring to this in the name you are giving, but once you move on, you have to amalgamate that within the text. It should not be like separate name hanging there and the details are given, but how it is. So for, for example, let me share this screen. Uh, one writer, uh, let us take this. Linguistic markers are important to understand this. Now, this is again for everybody, not only for her. So, uh, the other should not think that uh, it is not for us. So there is no need. In desert society, this is what uh, will be expected uh, when you see this. 
For example, uh, this article uh, is a news article. Nalanda, yeah? the university that changed the world. Let us see on the screen. Let it come. A slightly slow internet in that. This one. So now, uh, this is not a research article, so it will not have that high quality, but at least as an example, something we can get, which we can still improve on based on the way articles are written. So this is, uh, things are written there about uh, Nalanda University and other things. And then uh, at one place, he refers to, the article writer uh, refers to uh, this point. Let it get displayed on this screen. Some network issue in that. No, no you don't share, right? Have you shared? No, no sorry. I'm unsure. Uh, you can stop sharing. Yes. Here. Hmm. Now, so there is this paragraph, Aryabhat, considered the father of India. Now, see the word considered. And so, you don't say that Aryabhat is the father of Indian mathematics. Now, saying he is the father of this, then, or like considered, there is a huge difference. So, this linguistic marker gives you a stance. Unless you are not 100% in guarantee, you can't say affirmative sentence. Like is, it is this, it was like this, that way you can't use. So you use such word, considered, and is speculated to have headed the university. This university was headed by Aryabhat in 6th century, but there are no proofs. Evidences are not the sort you do. It's speculated. Now this word is very important when you say this. But at the same time when you say this, you have to also cite somebody. You have to like whose speculation, who considers. So in double inverted comma, we have uh, we believe uh, so and so Aryabhat has given, and then who is that? Anuradha Mitra, Kolkata based professor of mathematics, is brought in here. Now see, it is not put at the top of that uh, Anuradha Mitra at the top, and then things are written. But how you are telling something in between? You are using this to make your grammar much firm but strong, so that your argument gets uh, automatic support by the observers. Uh, this and then uh, he keeps on writing uh, further. It's a UNESCO heritage site. The links are given, this is the writing. So there are always these uh, links given, uh, which links to the other website also. You can see there on the screen, UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, that is linked. Uh, then uh, Urdu Afghan military general Akhtiar Hilji. Yeah, he was the one who destroyed this Buddhist center of knowledge and other uh, those kinds of things. Uh, and it is uh, here when you come down. Somebody is showing those places that these are the places where teachers used to stand. Now who is telling that? that uh, excavation has found the places where there were podiums for the teacher. It is Kamla Singh. Who is Kamla Singh? A, a local guide. A local guide is showing. Now see how uh, the observation of Kamla Singh is added inside, merged within the arguments which are made. Then further, there is something about a stupa, uh, this Ashoka stoops were there. So great stupa was there, third century people say it was uh, built, uh, Emperor Ashok has built that. Now who is this telling? Anjali Nair. Anjali Nair is a history teacher from Mumbai. 
I have highlighted, but it is like ha. Ah, this way. See how it is amalgamated within the flow of the text. All these things are within. So you are making your argument, and wherever you require the people, you are adding them. And that way, you are they are not separate. And here is one speaker, another one. They are disconnected completely. No, you make your trajectory. What you are doing is connecting the dots, and that is where you are creating knowledge. You are adding something new by connecting them in a particular sequence. Uh, then this also. Shankar Sharma. Uh, invasion by Bhakti Arkhilji, that is fine, but it is difficult to assign a definitive reason why he did that. There are different stories. Uh, it is very difficult to assign definitive reason for the invasion. Now, who said this? Shankar Sharma, director of the on-site museum. So this way uh, you have to merge things uh, together uh, in your right. You know. So though this is not a very good research article, but still it gives an idea that how things are merged together. Okay, next we can start. Now you can share the screen. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dhvani Rajiguru, and today I'm going to deal with war and violence in Adichie's novel Half of a Yellow Sun as a part of African literature. This is my personal information. Table of content. First introduction, brief of author, brief of Nigerian civil war, summary of novel, war and violence shown in the novel and conclusion. So first introduction, war is an armed conflict that is uh, uh, related with people, tribes or the nation. It is ascribed savagery and uh, as a, a terror to the highest order that has been endemic in the human society from time immemorial. It is not only it does not only affect the human but also to the entire ecosystem and it causes unquantifiable losses for example uh, increasing of abuses of female children and humanity too so last year chimananda, chimananda nagozi adichi gave the inaugural gabriel garcia marcus lecture and in which she uh, spoke that to start a story a true story thinking of a balance is already to place an obstacle in the path of that story she said because what one must focus on is not balance but the truth so the truth the truth about nigerian war she has portrayed in this novel half of a yellow sun so graceful evocation of forgotten time and the place during the biafran Bi biafran war and it explores the accurate historical and political account of the Nigerian and Biafran war. First, a brief of author. Chimananda Adichie was born on September 15, 1977 in Enugu, Nigeria. She grew up in Sukka, a university town in the southeastern Nigeria, where her family lived in the house formerly owned by fellow Nigerian writer Chinua Akebe. Her father was a statistics prof prof professor and her mother a registrar at the university. So she wrote many novels. Her first novel was Purple Hibis Hibiscus, uh, published in 2003. It won the Commonwealth Writer's Prize for the best first book. And her second novel, Half of a Yellow Sun, which I'm going to deal with, published in 2006. And a historical fiction that is set during the Nigerian Biafran War and tells the story of two sisters. It won 2007's Orange Prize. 
the third book of her is a collection of short stories which is published in 2009 that is called the thing around your neck and it was shortlisted for the 2009 john uh, Lev Lev leven rice memorial prize and zolo commonwealth writers prize so adichi was selected in zolo as one of the new york's 20 under 40s writer so she is very famous novel uh, novelist now brief information of nigerian war nigerian war which is also called called as nigerian biafran war it was the war between nigeria's federal government and the breakaway state biafra from 1967 to 1970 after nigeria became independent in 1960 the new country sought to combine groups divided by ethnicity and religion When the Northern Cop resulted in the murder of military and civilian member of Igbo people in 1967, they de declared their homeland, the Eastern religion, independent. It was now known as the Republic of Biafra, which is divided from Nigeria, and uh, the Ojukwu was its leader. It is increasingly vicious war that followed the FGM federal government. and when it with its superior uh, superior forces ruthlessly drove back to the biafran fighters appalling hardship ensued for the civilian population of biafra massacres were reported at the fmg's uh, soldiers advance the feminine took hold after the nigerian government blockaded biafra banned red cross air and as the world sat on its hand and ignored the developing human humanitarian disaster Hundred and thousands died in this war, and what happened? The starvation was also there. People were died due to hunger in Biafra too. The information is taken from Britain, Britannica. Now the summary of the novel. The title is "The Half of a Yellow Sun." As you can see, the Biafra's flag it covers the war and the years. It it is having the sun in middle of the. a uh, line so this shows the war and the years leading up to it in a sweeping story that provides both a harrowing history lesson and an engaging engaging human narrative central there are two central characters of this story the two twin sister first is olana and another is kaine and the people which are related to them So first, uh, Olana is educated from London. She the story when the story begins, she is in love with Od Oden Igbo. Oden Igbo is idolized by his newly arrived young servant Ugbu, which is her chef uh, as well as servant, and a village boy stunned by his master' comparatively opulent lifestyle. Now, Kane, the sis, uh, twin sister of Olana, is a shrewd businesswoman adept at the deal making that has also made their father rich. and powerful she falls in love with richard a white person and uh, that is uh, also a, a person the rebellion uh, from the igbo culture she is the person from the igbo culture as the rebellion begins kainen sees motives that ex escape her more nave associate so, uh, there is a, a, a dialogue that richard was surprised when he heard the announcement that the federal government had declared a police action to bring the rebels to order kainen was not it is the oil she said they can't let us go easily with all that oil olana and kainen embark on a very different roads become increasingly estranged both are almost embarrassed by their parents wealthy the dilettants and the central car crisis unfulfilled that drives the sisters still further apart and threaten olana's relationship with odenico uh, they now fallen apart and the scenes of nigerian and biafran war are there too in the novel and uh, the characters like uh, the olana when she goes there is one accident that when she goes to her relative house she uh, uh, sees that the biafran biafran people are killed so adichi uh, she uh, is a second generation sessionist and she has, has uh, mostly wrote about the war nigerian civil war about uh, in this novel now war and violence shown in the novel first pre war and post war memory of war memories of war racism horror scenes of war and violence so first is racism 
In the novel, one of the protagonist Odinigbo states, "The white man brought racism into the world." Uh, this, uh, in this, the British simply drew lines on the map in order to create political ent entitles with while colonizing Africa. When the map of Nigeria was drawn, there were two ethnic groups, Hausa and Igbo, were put together. The predominant differences among them were Hausa, who were largely Muslim, followed federalism, where the Igbo mainly Christians and pers pursued a democratic society. After the independence of Nigeria in 1960, the conflict between Hausa and Igbo became crucial to the identities. The fights led the Igbos to secede from Nigeria and then they uh, made a country called Biafra. As a result, the war took place in order to prevent the cession and to add the region back into the country to Nigeria. The Biafrans suffered from hunger, starvation and claimed that Nigeria was using hunger and genocide to win the war. In the end, Nigeria won the war and retained its structure as a, a unified nation, but still the ethnic groups do not identify with each other. Pre-war and post-war is also seen in the novel. Uh, novel, uh, it, it uh, jumped between the early 60s and the late 60s. The novel gives a detailed account of the war through the experience of its five main characters, Olana, Kainain, their spouses, uh, Odenigbo, Richard, and the houseboy, uh, houseboy Ugvu. The story represents the lives of Odenigbo and Olana belonging to the rational community at, at Sukka. Odenigbo is the strong advocate of Biafra session, and he remarks that only authentic identity for the African is the tribe, and that I am Nigerian because a white man created Nigeria and gave me that identity. But I was Igbo before that, before the white man came. Violence. Adichie foregrounds the violence of war through the suffering of the characters in their day-to-day -day existence. Violence uh, says the Cesaire in discourse on colonialism, a tool that is used by the colonizers to repress and control the colonized. Colonial rule is carried out through the force of violence, which was often cruel and uncompromising. Violence exercises power and also it exhibits the mean of subjection. In the novel, violence cannot be directly directed only towards the white community. Rather than violence, here becomes a inter internalized, internalized where the suffering is inflicted upon one community and in turn to other members of the black extended community. The cycle nature of violence starts as white on black violence and moves into the black community and proceeds as black on black violence. This is from the article of Afzal. So Half of a Yellow Sun is a story about also a birth and short life of Biafra, life that ended in one or of the worst possible ways. So uh, in the chapter four of the novel, there is one dialogue that the world was silent when they died. They means here the Biafra. Biafra becomes a synonym for starvation, hunger, misery, children with huge bilis and limbs like toothpicks, kwashior cor. That is kwashior cor is uh, the disease in, the, in which the uh, person is getting uh, sleep day by day. But this is not only story about the war with its horror is the scenery of, of for the story. For example, the horror scenes of not only war is there, but love, loyalty, friendship, betrayal, forgiveness, eh, about fight and survival is also there. It is very universal story that placed in one precise historical content. Now war. Uh, in the article, uh, it, it reminds the people, the novel reminds the people of the characters of their past history and the significance of the tragedy, how they are uh, related with uh, Nigerian identity, the Igbo identity. In the ar article, No Humanity in the War, uh, written by Omelo, uh, Umelo, he recounts that what Akebe has stated in the preface to Morning, yet on the creation day, that in our situation, the greater danger lies not in remembering, but in forgetting. I believe that if we were to survive as a nation, we need to grasp the meaning of tragedy. One way to do is to remind ourselves so uh, constantly of the things that happened and how we felt that when it was happening. Memory of war. 
uh, as omar writes in his article ugwu the chef embodies a memory that competes with the elite and borgois one which has defined the literary historiography of the war he evolves from the state of natively as a house boy to become a vernacular intellectual his involvement in the war allows adichi to explore an expiatory and authorial role for him and that reflects the evolution of the traumatic cultural and collective memory of the destroyed bifarian bifarian nation ugwu is therefore a product of composite consciousness that embodies composite memories these memories cut across the daily life of ugwu's middle class employer and the trauma of the bifarian war and his role as a child soldier the memories are also examined through their individual and collective collective dimensions so these are my references thank you in african literature mostly women are portrayed as the oppressed voice of society but do you find any different perspective in gap or colonialism yes uh they are not oppressed voice but in the novel they are first the protagonist and they are having the uh, own voice and they choose their life independently so yes according to you how does racism convert into novel half of half of colonialism so richard uh, who was the nigerian and also he was belonging from the white people so the uh, constant uh, he he loved uh, he loved king kenes but what what was happening that constant there was constant struggle uh, struggle between the, the war is also shown in the novel so constant struggle between white people and nigerian was shown in that and richard uh, like richard was not the villain but he 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 was as a, uh, a male protagonist and he he was seeing that how the white and black were struggling in the novel. It's in full screen. Hello, everyone. Myself, Divya Parmar, and today I am going to make presentation on myth in Volsoinka's uh, Dance of the Forest, Table of Content, 
introduction about the uh, work about the author what is myth myths in dance of the forest conclusion and citation introduction Wolsonka's play uh, dance of the forest uh, is a complex exploration of a myth tradition and struggle of power in the aftermath of a colonialism the play is set in a fictional uh, african country where uh, different ethnic groups are summoned to participate in a festivals of a renewal uh, and reconciliation which is the meant to restore harmony and unity after a long period of conflict and domination however the festival become a site of a con uh, contentions and the subversions as the participants bring their uh, own myths rituals and aspirations to stage and clash within each other in a fierce battle of narratives and identities so this presentation is about the myths which uh, which is presented in a dance of the forest a dance of a nigerian playwright the nobel laureate wol soinka it was first performed in 1960 on the evening of a nigeria's independence from british colonial, colonial rule and has since become a seminal work in the canon's african post colonial drama the play is a complex and multilayered exploration of identity history politics and culture that draws on a range of african and western theoretical uh, traditional and incorporates the elements of a dance music and ritual the play is a set in a fictional african country where different ethnic groups are summoned up by wise old men to participate in a festival of a renewal and reconciliation which is meant to heal or wound the the past of a for an and a new collective identity however the festival becomes a site of a con, uh, contentions and the conflict as a different groups bring their own traditions myths and agendas to the stage and the clash with each other in a fierce battle for power and recon, uh, reconcilations the play is a st structured as a series in interlocking ep uh, interlocking episodes each of which features a different group of a character and they explore a dif different themes or issues the characters include the uh, cunning tri uh, tricksters and the brilliant soldiers the uh, passionate lover the wise elder and the mysterious forest spirit among other so all are, uh, we can uh, find that the all character are uh, play role in uh, as uh, they have mentioned in in this introduction through their uh, uh, interactions and the uh, confrontation confrontations at the play exposes the deep rooted tensions and the contradictions of the post colonial africa and offers a powerful uh, critic and imperialism nationalism and authoritarianism in short a dance of the forest is a rich and a challenging work of the combines and poetic and the political the mythic and the modern and the inv uh, invites us to reflect on the complex legacy uh, legacies and the colonialism and the en ensuring the struggles for freedom justice and identity in africa and beyond i am not going to uh, deal with this uh, summary of the uh, wall play uh, now the introduction of wall soinka wall soinka was born on uh, 13 july 1934 at Ebenkuta near the Ibandan in western Nigeria after the uh, pre uh, preparatory university studies in 1954 at the government college in Ibandan he continued the university of leeds where later in 1973 he took his doctorate during the six years of spent in england he was the uh, dramatist as the royal court theater in london 1958 to 1959 and in 1960 he was awarded a rockefeller uh, bursary and he returned to a nigeria to study african drama and, the, and here we uh, we can uh, see that uh, uh, his mastery in uh, african drama in this play at the same time he taught drama and uh, literature at various universities in ibandan logos and ife 
where uh, since 1975 he has been the professor of uh, comparative literature in 1960 he founded the uh, theater group and the 1960 marks and in 1964 the origin of theater company uh, in uh, which he uh, has pro produced his own plays and taken part as actor he has uh, periodically been visiting professor as a university of cambridge shefford and yell uh, famous works of him the interpreters in 1965 seasons of enemy in 1973 the main died prison notes 1972 a shuttle in a crypt 1972 and ogun abimian in 1976 so what is myth according to cambridge dictionary myth means an ancient story or a set of a story especially explaining explaining the early history of a group of people or about nature events or facts according to merriam webster uh, defines myth as a usually traditional story of obstinately uh, historical events that serves to unfold unfold part of the world view of a people or explain a practice belief and a natural phenomenon so uh, the third one is according to collins dictionary a myth is a well known story which was made up in the past of explain nature even or a justifies religious beliefs or social customs according to britannica myth as a symbolic narrative usually of a unknown origin at the least partly traditional that obstinately uh, relate actual events that is especially associated with the religious belief it is uh, distinguished from the symbolic behavior cult ritual and symbolic places or objects temples uh, icons myth are a specific accounts or a gods or a superhuman being involved in the ex extraordinary events or a circumstances in a uh, time that is uh, unspecified but which is the understood as exciting uh, apart from the ordinary human experiences the term mythology denotes uh, both the study of myth and body of myths belonging to the particular religion uh, religious tradition we can find that uh, here in african uh, african literature we can find that the uh, myth is connected with their god and their and their relig uh, religious beliefs also uh, when we compare uh, any other literature if we compare in indian literature we also find the uh, myth related to gods and uh, uh, in symbols myth in a dance of the forest in the dance of the forest volsoinka use elements of a traditional african mythology and folklore to create a richly symbolic and allegorical play in a uh, uh, while reading the dance of the forest we come to know that there are uh, three or three four myths are uh, uh, referred and the uh, here uh, the uh, important uh, myth we can find that that is a yoruba myth the play draws on a range of african myth and stories including the yoruba myth of creation the story of a trickers figure issue and the story of a legendary king oduwa these myths are uh, woven together create a complex uh, tapestry of the symbolism and meaning for example the forest in the play represent the space of freedom and possibility in contrast contrast to the oppressive and a corrupt world outside the spirit uh, who inhabited the forest represent a kind of a primal uh, uh, primal power and wisdom that is uh, connected to the land and the natural natural world by contrast the mortals who enters the forest portrayed as the ignorant and corrupt driven by greed and a desire for power uh, here is the reference of yoruba myth so what is yoruba myth uh, according to uh, from a gateway of africa the yoruba tribe of a west africa has a myth about how they were created in the beginning there was only the sky and above water and the marshland below the chief god of olorun ruined this uh, ruled the sky and the goddesses olukun ruled the uh, was below 
Obatala, another god, reflect upon the situation, then went to Olorun for the permission to create dry land for all kinds of living creature to inhabit. He was the given uh, permission, so uh, so he sought advice from Orun, uh, Orun Mila, an oldest son, uh, son of the Olorun, and the god of uh, uh, prophecy. He was the told he would need a gold chain long enough to reach below. The snail's shell filled the, with uh, sand, a white hand and a black cat, and the palm uh, the palm nut, all of which he have, he was a carry in a bag. All the go uh, gods contributed what gold they had, and the or Orun Mila supplied the articles for uh, articles for the bag. When the uh, all was ready, Obatala hung the uh, Obatala hung the chain from the corner of the sky, placed the bag over his shoulder, and then started the down downward climb. When he reached to the uh, end uh, to the chain, he saw the steel had some distance to go. From the above, he heard uh, Orun Mila instructed him to pour a sand from the snail's shell and also immediately release the white hand he uh, he did as uh, he was told whereupon the hand landing on the sand began uh, scratching and the scat scattering it uh, about uh, whatever wherever the sand landed it formed dry land and the bigger uh, piles becoming hills and the smaller piles valleys octala octala jumped uh, to a hill and named the place if the dry land now extended as far he could see he dug a hole planted the palm nut and so it grew the maturity in a flesh the mature palm tree dropped more palm nuts and of on the ground each of the which grew immediately to the uh, mat immediate, immediately to the maturity of the repeated the process Obatala settled down with the cat for company. Many months passed and he grew bored with his uh, routine. He decided to create a beings like himself to keep him a company. He dug into the sand and soon found a clay with which he molded a figures like himself and started on his task. But he, he soon grew tired and decided to take a break he made a wine uh, he made wine from a from a nearby palm tree and drank ball after bowl not realizing he has drunk obatala returned to his task and uh, fashioning uh, the new beings because of his uh, condition he uh, fashioned uh, many imperfect figures without realizing he, this he called out to a uh, olarun to breathe into uh, these creatures. The next day he realized that he had done and swore never to drink again and to take care of those who were uh, deformed, thus becoming a protector or a deformed. The new people built uh, huts and Obatala has done, uh, had done one and soon if uh, profess, prospered and they became a, became a city. All the other gods were happy with what Obatala had uh, done and visited the land often. Expect the or Ol Olukun, the ruler of the all below the sky. She uh, she had not uh, been uh, consulted by the Obatala. Here is a mistake. It is he uh, grew angry and he had uh, usurped so many uh, of her uh, kingdom. When Obatala returned to his home in the sky for a visit, Olokun summoned the great waves of her vast oceans and sent them surings across to the land waves. And after waves, she uh, unleashed until uh, much of the land was uh, underwater and many of the uh, people were drowned. drowned. Uh, those, uh, those that had uh, fled to the highest land, uh, Besieged and the god Ishu, who had been visiting to the return to the sky and report what was happening to them. Ishu demanded a sacrifice to be a mad of Obatala and himself bef uh, before he would uh, 
deliver the message. The people sacrificed the some goats and issued return to the sky. Wish or Orun Mila heard the news, climbed down the golden chain to earth, and the cast many spells with uh, which caused the flood waters and retreat, retreat and the dry African land river. So ended uh, the great flood. So e here we can uh, see in in this myth the uh, creation. Uh, first of all, the creation of human beings and all creatures and the land. After that, uh, 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 the God. Uh, uh, Creator beings like him then uh, he realizes mistake and at the end it is uh, come to the disaster. The end. Uh, here in when we connect this Yoruba myth we read uh, in the dance of the forest. So according to the Simran and Dr. Ramandip, Soinka's main source of inspiration in Yoruba culture and tradition that he mixes with the other African practices and beliefs. Yoruba mythological figures, stories, rituals, and festivals play an important role in Soinka's play. The theoret theoretical uh, festivals play an important role in Soinka's play. The philosophy of Wol Soinka is found on Ogun's mythology. In Yoruba's ritual or the mysterious of Ogun, he described the origins of Yoruba tragedy. Here the word uh, uh, comes the festivals. We can connect in the dance of the forest uh, festival is a part when uh, all uh, ghosts uh, come together and the incident happen, which we can connect with the uh, uh, myth of Yoruba, the forest spirit. The forest spirit is a central mythical figure in the play and the portrayed as a powerful and mysterious entity and the embodies to the force and nature of the spiritual realm. The forest of spirit is often associated with the Yoruba deity Osun and Wu is also uh, associated with the forest and rivers. The ancestors, the ancestral tradition and the beliefs are an important part of Yoruba culture and they play a significant role in the play. The characters often invoke the spirit of their ancestors and guide, guidance and the protections. And they perform rituals that are a main honor to the connect with their ancestors, language and symbolism. The play is written in a style of incorporates Yoruba language and symbolism, which is gives it is a, a distinct flavor of adds to cultural richness. The characters often speak in proverbs and metaphors that are rooted in Yoruba tradition and the uses of a max, the other symbolism in the play draws in Yoruba artistic and ritual traditions. So, uh, uh, among these, there are also uh, other myths like a use of a mask and uh, symbols. Here we also find in Yoruba myth uh, the symbols of a uh, white hand, black cat, the sand, and uh, and the spirit. We also uh, connect these uh, symbols with the uh, dance of the forest. And conclusion, thus to conclude the pre presentation, some uh, presentation, some points are brought pro the use of myths in a dance of the forest by Walsh Inca, which is uh, deeply connected with the African mythology. These are my work citation. Can you connect any Indian mythological belief with Yoruba's myth? Yes, Dhani. Uh, uh, in Yoruba's myth, we can find the uh, uh, the creation by God. And uh, if if we want to compare with in Indian mythological, uh, there there is also belief of Brahma, who is a creator creator of the world. So the the Brahma's myth we can connect with this. So not this second. Can you connect any kind of character of the novel with the Obatala's character? Yes, uh, the uh, character of uh, uh, 
the character of a uh, forest spirit uh, i forgot the name which is con uh, which i can connected with the uh, character of obatala so there is a very interesting parallel no the creation myth the creation of uh, even genesis bible's uh, story so that also yoruba has a different story of uh, the creation so that also is a good idea for comparative analysis when you think of uh, that how you can compare the myth of creation uh, in different things so now you get something from african way of looking also european we have because european literature we study indian we have because we grow with indian stories and mythologies now even african way also uh, one can get the same way But we can be curious to know about other world like Japan, China. Uh, what are their creation myths and how, what kind of stories are uh, narrated? So it becomes a very good comparative uh, study. Also, so in comparative paper, also it can be used and dissertation or other thing. In future research, also one can think of uh, about uh, similar kind of ideas. Uh, we find theories and all the research upon that we get enough scope mm. but when we deal with the african myth or any african beliefs mm. we get very uh, difficult to get uh, yeah, and uh, it is not like we uh, if we want to cite any uh, indian myth we uh, got the book like uh, proper citation and who said this but in uh, african it become diff difficult difficult to search cite. also so th that is also the how the first second and third world is divided economically and in digital space also digital space decides which countries are developed developing and underdeveloped so why african countries are underdeveloped because they still don't have much of digital space also their languages their uh, literature uh, everything is still not uploaded the way so the best you find from european and americans then even in india we struggle a lot sanskrit literature we want something we get but still not comparable because we are developing part so even uh, the digital can be the tool to see which countries are uh, uh, at the top which are at the middle and which are at the lower space also so that also this gives an understanding so when you make the similar arguments in other thing that what is it to be a developed country you know, like when we think of becoming a vishwa guru, guru or any country would be dreaming to become vishwa guru if an african country also dreams so what should be the parameters so this can be one of the many parameters what is your digital space what is your digital space and that space of the nation grows when the people's space is larger people the nation is made up of people so if large number of people are actively involved in a meaningful manner with the digital space then that country also has lots of uh, uh, space uh, uh, there uh, then those countries become at the top uh, and their material their literature uh, uh, in large amount is made available uh, there so that is also one of the ways to like uh, contribute into the development of a nation through digital means uh, also can be said so when you are involved in this you realize that why some materials are available some are not available and then you question what are the people doing how people are engaged now this spaces are not where you are a slave and somebody is not allowing you to do so the way time and again we go back to macole kind of a thing and say that we were not allowed to study in our language or we were forced english education system and so we are helpless rather we can say that was our advantage if we use that advantage and today we can make lots of use of that and the digital space also so in post colonial argument when africans also battle with that african literature also battle a lot with the cultural conflict with the european india also has that the same kind of a thing at that time this points become important that uh, if you don't do then how will you make yourself prominently visible to the world now africans perhaps may not be aware that somebody in india in gujarat in bhavnagar might be studying african literature and they might have a struggle in understanding our literature our myths also because we are not putting things in a more authentic manner they would perhaps never come to know 
but that also is the thing if we are going live so if any of the africans will ever uh, watch this video yeah, because uh, uh, this text uh, an artist of the floating world is also in one of the kenyan university syllabus nigeria uh, in one university so that that professor has recommended this videos which we have prepared so I see on my YouTube that lots of people are watching from Kenya. So I was surprised. And then I got one day a mail from the professor that our uh, students are watching. And he also many of them said that don't speak in your language. We cannot understand your language. Because in between, I speak a lot of uh, Gujarati uh, language also. So they, that is why they say that those part we cannot understand. So uh, it, it, that is how. So what I say that someday if somebody is listening, they will realize it is actually happening also. The Japanese text uh, is there in the syllabus and there are a lot many people watching those videos uh, there. So this remark also can help them that how they all can become contributors in the digital space where their country, their culture, their mythology can be visible to the world. Uh, somebody doing research in a remote part can get the advantage of that also. These are the things which people still don't understand <laughs> that why all these things are necessary. Uh, why? What is the outcome? It, it requires like a you have to be at a global level to think then only you if you are at in a in a well you can't think of this that why these things are necessary that people never understand if you are only in the well kup mundak as we say if we think of an idea of vasudeva kutumb which is an idea which always come if you have udarachit udarachit means open mindedness if you have that only can lead to this thinking otherwise Kupu Mundak is what our observations normally are. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today is uh, in uh, today's uh, presentation. My topic is reading eco criticism in the play A Dance of the Forest by Wal Soinka. This is my uh, information. Born in uh, 13 July in West Nigerian, uh, who, uh, who is a dram uh, dramatist uh, at the Royal Court Theatre in London and awarded a uh, Rockefeller uh, bursary. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, he returned to uh, study African drama. Then uh, he, he has been also a professor of comparative literature and he founded theatre group uh, uh, the 1960 ma uh, masks and uh, uh, in 1964 and uh, his uh, no Nobel, uh, he was awarded Nobel Prize in Literature in 1986 and uh, 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 because that uh, who he considered as uh, who, who in a wide uh, cultural uh, perspective and with poetic overtones fashions in the drama of existence. The play uh, uh, as John Melum, uh, Melum uh, states that Soinka's play is a dance uh, in the forest uh, was performed for the first time during Nigerians independence and uh, explore many issues related to uh, independent movement in Nigeria, relations, uh, relation to uh, tradition to the history and Nigerian politics. In this play, Soenka seems to stress that it is the duty of Nigerians to get rid of the evil out of the society. The play warns to the people of Nigeria that if they, uh, they do not remain alert, History will repeat itself and people would repeat their mistakes. So in the play, uh, we can say that uh, uh, they, uh, this uh, uh, spirit, uh, uh, dead, dead men and dead women are uh, recalled again uh, uh, in the present uh, to resolve uh, what, uh, what, what has happened with them in the, uh, in the meeting uh, at the forest. So, uh, what is eco criticism? Uh, in Abraham's uh, glossary of uh, literary uh, terms, uh, it said that uh, eco criticism was a term coined in the late uh, 1970s by combining criticism with a shortened uh, form of ecology, the science that investigates the interrelation of all forms of 
plant and animal life with each other and with their physical habits eco criticism uh, eco criticism uh, in in that the uh, critical writings that explore the relations between literature and biology biological and uh, physical environment conduct conducted with an uh, acute awareness of the damage being wrought uh, on that environment by human activities so uh, in uh, uh, in the play of uh, uh, at the uh, end of uh, near at the end of uh, this uh, play uh, uh, in that uh, the interpreter called uh, different uh, spirits uh, from the forest like a uh, spirit of palm a spirit of darkness spirit of uh, precious uh, stone and uh, uh, as it uh, it was in the uh, article of uh, article uh, theater and environmental protection and eco critical study of the selected place of wall sewing cup by Gabriel Takafe. Uh, at the conclu conclusion of this article, uh, the uh, the author uh, said that as uh, Lawrence Buell uh, has proposed four evolution criteria for a writer to be considered an environmental uh, envir environmentalist. Firstly, that uh, nature must be a character in his text. So uh, th uh, these are the character like spirit. Uh, we can. Uh, uh, we can include that uh, uh, these are the character that spirit uh, of palm, spirit of darkness, spirit of precious stones, and uh, uh, other spirit of uh, petty dreams, uh, spirit of rivers, uh, sun, and volcanoes. So these spirits uh, one by one came, and uh, the uh, Walsoinka gives the language uh, to the uh, the nature uh, nature elements. Other uh, uh, chorus of water and ant leader uh, they also uh, raise their voice uh, uh, in front of the forest uh, forest board and uh, uh, and this conversation uh, is uh, lead the concern of that uh, uh, in eco uh, critical uh, eco critical eco criticism then uh, shoe and bed uh, suggest that the future is bleak for mankind and uh, this uh, ant leader who uh, in in the uh, in the play the ant leader also uh, ra raised their uh, voice that our future is uh, bleak so it it is uh, this blink future uh, that what uh, soenka dramatizes in the in the play especially in the section where uh, the three human characters are masked and in a state of uh, possession they speak for the future in the voice of different spirits and uh, other uh, other thing that uh, elder uh, jones uh, intimates that the spirits together symbolize the total environment of africa and all its resources and all its potentialities. This is my work citation. Thank you. How author connects spiritual patchy drums concern as a part of eco criticism with this novel? Uh, so far, uh, in uh, spirit of patchy drums, uh, I would like to connect with that in Africa there there are uh, very uh, very much uh, uh, like ivory uh, and uh, that ivory things uh, were there and uh, uh, in Africa the they, they banned ivory uh, uh, in in the history. So uh, patchy dreams are about that uh, that kind of animals. Uh, so I I just connect uh, this uh, with ivory. Uh, So, Divya, my question is, as you have mentioned in your presentation about the spirit of palm, 
So uh, how can uh, it is connected with the eco-critical concern? Can you explain a little more about that? Uh, I I don't know about uh, specific in uh, spirit of palm, but uh, spirit of palm uh, that we can consider uh, we can connect with uh, that uh, the very uh, uh, the jungles that in Africa uh, or uh, in Africa that they are uh, uh, lead, they are they are in in that uh, near to uh, end. Uh, in, in that time, so maybe on only that spirit of palm that I that I don't know about more in that. Should I start, sir? Okay. Uh, my name is Amy Sharawani, and uh, in the paper of African literature, I am going to deal uh, with the poem that is Live Burial by the Wal Soinka. And my topic is uh, Live Burial Survival in the Face of adversi uh, Adversity or Operation. These are my informations. And in this presentation, uh, these are the points I am going to discuss. First uh, is that what is poetry? Who is Walsoinka? What is uh, claustrophobia? Analysis of the poem, live burial, conclusion, and that at the last work cited. So uh, what is poetry? I uh, choose this definition uh, because I think that uh, how the literary uh, style of the Walsoinka is going uh, when when he is writing the poetry uh, i think this definition is going with that much writing that formulates a concentrated imaginative awareness of experience in language chosen and arranged to create a specific emotional uh, response through meaning sound and rhythm african fiction in english focuses on the tension between traditional and western modes of living and seeks to uh, place the African struggle against West, uh, Western domination and exploitation in the uh, correct perspective. Uh, we know that Africa, Africa, India, and uh, those are the third world countries were uh, uh, suffering from the colonization. And after uh, the period of post-colonization, how people were trying to, uh, trying to seek themselves into the uh, understanding of uh, the whole process of exploitation it is evident that African literary figures are deeply concerned with their own experiences of suffering. This theme is frequently explored in, uh, explored in the literature of continent, uh, with writers using their work to give a voice to the struggles and injustice faced by themselves and their communities through uh, power, powerful image, uh, imagery and evocative language. African writers seek to convey the depth of human emotion and the complexity of the African experience. Creating works that are both moving and thought-provoking, uh, overall the liter uh, literature of Africa serves as a, uh, as a testament of, of the strength, resilience, and the creativity of its people, even the face of adversity. Now, who is the Wal Swenka? He is the Nobel Prize uh, winner for the literature in 1986. And I have put uh, the uh, collections of the poems which he has published uh, because now I, my topic is related to poetry and his writing uh, the way of uh, portrayal uh, himself into the poetry. 
the live burial poem is uh, we can get the collection uh, that is a shuttle uh, a, a shuttle in the crypt the title live burial functions as a, uh, functions as a summary of what the nigerian government tried to impose on uh, soinka's mind the focused image of live burial is about specific response from the depths of the human nightmares the thought of being bur uh, buried while still uh, living also the necessarily creates the fear of premature death uh, now uh, when we go to the poem we come to know that uh, uh, this poem is uh, uh, totally about the life of prishna and uh, the walsoinka the poet uh, he spent uh, 22 months in the prison and at that time he was writing uh, his poems Uh, in the collection later and published a uh, live burial is a poem about the life of a prisoner and the treatment they are receiving inside the prison cell so i think this poem is a particular expression when uh, you put a poet into the prison so how you can get the expression uh, the feelings or the emotions what the, they are uh, facing or the, they are having while they are getting themselves into the imprisonment uh now uh, uh what is the uh, cl claustrophobia claustrophobia is a specific phobia where one fears closed spaces claustro means closed examples of closed uh, spaces are like engine rooms uh, small or locked rooms cellars tunnels elevators mri machines subway trains crowded places etc et uh basically what happens if the person is facing this kind of phobia uh when they when they go to the such kind of places when they when they uh, feel uh, isolated uh, by the um, space they are they are having and uh, now, uh, we see the example like what kind of uh, places are uh, stimulating them to have uh, this kind of phobia uh this is expressed in the lines uh, describing the poet's cell room the lines that uh, start with the po uh, poem that is 16 paces by 23 so here we get the measurement uh, where the uh, poet has lived as a prisoner they hold siege against humanity and truth Emplo uh, employing time drilled through his sanity the confinement of the healthy man to a space as limited as 16 by 23 paces over a extended period of time would undoubtedly leave him feeling suffocated and restless in fact the poet's pacing within the cell is not an attempt to measure its dimensions but rather an uh, effort to uh, elevate to uh, claustrophobic sensations that arise from the room's confinement the restricted movement and confinement within the small space given a uh, rise to a sense of uh, entrapment which is expressed to uh, expressed through the poet's uh, frenzied movements now uh, how these lines are having these uh, two words uh, room is standing as a prison and uh, he is telling the sage against humanity and truth so a poet himself is uh, standing for the truth like he is feeling like he is the truth ultimate and uh, uh, the government of uh, th that time has put he, uh, him into the prison the poet depicts the smallness of his own uh, cell room which impress impressions truth uh, seal him life in that same narcopolis may his ghost mistress point the classic route, uh, route to outsiders Uh, stage and mysteries the word stage in uh, in addition to its meaning of gloomy and dark uh, infernal and hellish also specifically references to the uh, river of river of sticks which is uh, which which in greek mythology surrounds the uh, underworld of hades and isolates the uh, dead souls from the living so soinka lives uh, uh, as a dead soul isolated imprisonment uh, from the uh, world of living then uh, further he is uh, going to uh, discuss about the three gods and uh, uh, 
these these guards are like the lizard the goal and the boy the guard is habituated of the surrounding he is uh, sniff uh, sniffing the dead bodies to clear his head of sins he had hanged thousands of innocent people on gallows and a wooden the wooden frame he is like a warrior who gains pleasure by watching other who are nacked he was patrolling for, for the hours and was uh, entertained by hearing the painful voices of the prisoners in these three stanzas he is discussing about these three guard, uh, about the guard by the three metaphors he is taking the lizard the how the lizard is uh, uh, lizard is uh, specify that that is lizard is going to uh, uh, wandering on in, uh, on the wall and how it is making it dirty and then he uh, put it the metaphor is the coal and what uh, the coal is standing like the the one who uh, eating the dead bodies and uh, this uh, this kind of ghostly things and the warrior that is uh, uh, he is dealing with when uh, when this poet is uh, sitting on the toilet seat and uh, he's uh, he used this specific word that is the voyeur that means uh, someone who gains a pleasure by watching other as nat to conclude we can say that walsoenga has written this poem when he was in prison and wrote on the toilet paper as a prisoner though the poetic sense and the its strong use of words prove as how the nobel prize winner poet can paint down the life when life itself in her is hardest as an activist he has thrown the light on many aspect by his writing which are not easily visible to the common people so inka thus uh, literally means uh, that uh, he believes the power structures uh, thrills in the pain of even basic human uh, exertion and the voyeur uh, voyeur guard conclusion uh, conscious of his own actions debases how uh, how his own humanity passed the point of uh, point of return soinka suffers are not a mere imprisonment but the evils of torture the live burial functions not only as a metaphor but for soinka is almost and actu uh, actuality these are my work citation thank you so amisha my question uh, is uh, you have mentioned a uh, three guard uh, in uh, the poem you put the uh, or in the line, line from poem so how the Uh, character of goal put as in a card as a uh, what is a uh, role of him or uh, what is your reading about that not metaphor yes so uh, as mentioned that also inka has put uh, three metaphor to uh, to portray the actual situation he was facing in the prison so uh, the person who was talking uh, on him while he was in prison at, uh, he was like how he was sounding to the prisoners when when there are the prisoners are already tried uh, tired of waiting for their death they are the uh, snap gods we can say for the bad deeds of powerful people and how uh, someone is uh, how someone is longing for something to be uh, to have a salvation from that situation and uh, if if another person is patrolling over and hours and hours to them so here uh, he use in that sense that how ghostly thing seems in our conscious or in our unconscious and how he uh, here he beautifully uh, point out the conscious feeling uh, of him while he was patrolling he was uh, the how wal soyanka was feeling can you elaborate more how uh, this uh, claustrophobia is presented through whole uh, lisa 
yes so uh, when you put a person in the room which contains the space like uh, as we know 16 paces or uh, or that kind of the person is uh, what, what kind of thinking of that person will be like we will uh, obviously see the around surrounding of us uh, where we are put it so by the time uh, if the normal person in prison they will uh, they always uh, he or she always thinks about to get uh, anxiety and all kind of things like depression but here the unique thing is that walswenka uh, was feeling thrilled rather than an anxious or the depressed so uh, he was watching around him and the surroundings how affected to his writing that is the best example he has used these uh, three metaphors what he was watching actually in that prison cell so uh, this uh, phobia is connected to uh, that uh, like this uh, when you have uh, this kind of phobia you can not see uh, beyond something which is your surrounding which is in your surroundings okay, next one uh, by the time uh, let me give a reminder you have to put your presentations of uh, dissertation as well as uh, translation and comparative studies uh, in google classroom you might have received the notification uh, for uh, this one that is a dissertation which ppt is ready i think you all have made ppt presentation uh, all have read the paper so still two have not submitted in google classroom is dhwani and divya so i don't think it takes much time yeah, in doing it takes five minutes only uh, in completing the work uh, then also why you people keep work incomplete that i don't understand something that can be done within five minutes uh, what is the purpose of keeping it uh, in community? Which is already done, you just have to share the PPT in Google Classroom. So that, that leads to the doubt towards your sincerity towards your work. Whether if you take the work sincerely, then people normally don't forget the things. Uh, and then, and the second one, uh, this translation and comparative studies, you have to put two things. Uh, your PPT, which will be collective because you have done group work and your video also the live i have uploaded the video recorded one so that link also also you have to uh, upload i have put uh, the entire playlist i have put in the link so that you can easily find it uh, and uh, that you have to put so in case you want to watch again before your exam that's why that link is handy you can also have a watch at that and what you presented so you, it can again be refreshed uh, two months back what you were preparing what you read that's why that video link we are asking and so it, it may help you in uh, remembering those that article that you have done again uh, so that also you have put wherein uh, only six have submitted the work yet amina druvita amisha janvi zil and nirav they have submitted others uh, have yet not submitted okay? so that also you have to do it uh, quickly so that some unnecessary reminders i don't have to give there may be many other incomplete tasks which you will ask uh, when we will have digital portfolio demonstration uh, i hope by that time you will complete also your work but still that but such thing which is so easy everything is ready you just have to link and submit okay? so that those kinds of work should be done immediately Should I start, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, so my topic is thematic study of the poem "You Laughed and Laughed and Laughed" by Gabriel Ukara. And uh, first, let me begin with about the poem. So "You Laughed and Laughed and Laughed" is a poem by Nigerian writer Gabriel Ukara that is written uh, was that was written in 1950, and it was later published in 1955. So the poem is a particularly satire on Western people who consider themselves themselves as a superior than African culture. So it is written by African African poet 
to satire, uh, satire, uh, satire the uh, Western mentality of superiority. And the poem includes a lot many themes such like uh, cultural conflicts, modernism, colonialism, uh, uh, nationalism, and at last the racism. The poem is consists into 10 stanzas. Now let me begin with the theme. Uh, first theme that I have taken is cultural conflict. Cultural conflict, uh, here we in the poem we find cultural conflict between African and uh, Western culture. The poem is uh, taking side of African culture and its heritage because it is it was written by African poet. Uh, in If we see that uh, this poem, we find that Africa and India has cultural difference along, along with geographical difference. So African culture, we find that it is more close to nature or uh, uh, they are living uh, around the nature or worshipping nature. Where Western culture, according to poem, we find as a materialistic uh, that is uh, described by Okara. And uh, due to that, we find that there is conflict between superior, uh, superior and inferior because the Western people are white and African people are considered as a black. So they thought the Western people are uh, thinking that they are superior because they have white complexion. And uh, due to the geographical differences, they had this uh, skin color. And due to that, we find that uh, this conflict of superior and inferior, uh, inferior. And if we see that Western people considered African as an inferior and everything, not only the cult, uh, that African people, but everything that is belong to Africa, African, uh, that is like their culture, their people, their behavior, their manners, everything they are considering as a inferior. And that we find in the poem that is uh, in, in the very first line, we find that uh, you laughed at no, in, in between the lines, we find that you laughed at my song, you laughed at my walk, you laughed at my dance, you laughed at my insight, you laughed and laughed and laughed. So here we find that laughing at song, it means they are their culture, this, their songs or their dance are their culture. Uh, they, on them, the Western people are laughing, their walk means their physical appearance, they are, it is representing their physical appearance. On their physical appearance, they are laughing. Or we can say their insights means their behavior, their manners, their uh, their uh, their uh, uh, behaviors. On them also they are laughing and showing them this laugh is very sar sarcastic. Here we find that they are showing them inferior, their culture, their uh, their appearance, everything. In other cases, we find that Gabriel Okara defend try to defend their like defending his people and his culture, but he himself trying to put. Uh, um, put the Western people down that our culture is superior than your. If you are thinking, it is trying, Gabriel Okara trying to say in his poem that you are saying that Western culture is superior, but our culture is more superior than yours, are more close to nature and everything uh, are good than, than the Western culture. So he is trying to put down the, uh, put down uh, Western culture by saying this word is indicating this that the word he used that ice block la ice block laughter that he used for western people it is showing that uh, there like it is trying to put down the western people or culture uh, in we find but if we deeply analyze the thing we find that it is not just uh, uh, it is not a judgmental view of gabriel okara rather it is a pain or an pain for unacceptable behavior of Western people from Western towards Africans. So we consider it as a pain uh, of unacceptability unaccept rather than the judgmental view. Uh, we can uh, contrast like that also. Hmm. Now the second theme that I have taken is modernism. According to Merriam Webster dictionary, we find that modernism is a practice usage, usage or expressions particular to modern times in the po in the poem we find that poet use some modern words that make this poem a modern piece of uh, work in the very first line we find that in your ears my song is motor car misfiring stopping with a choking cough and you laughed and laughed and laughed so this in this line we find the word motor car or we uh, find that choking cough is is a uh, something that is indicating modernism in in the poem of okara 
the another line is also indicating the uh, modernism that is instead you entered your car and laughed and laughed and laughed so here car is also a symbol of modernism and it is not just a symbol of modernism rather it is a symbol of luxury lifestyle also now we find that Afri here we also find that african people are shown as more close to nature following traditional lifestyle like the dancing singing and other things uh, that is for their their uh, uh, particular style to entertain themselves while these western people are shown that uh, more modern or luxurious lifestyle by using such word for modern uh, more uh, western people like motor car or car or such things now the third one is colonialism uh, so what is colonialism so ex as per Ma mariam webster dictionary we find that colonialism is a domination of people or area by foreign state or nation that the practice of extending and maintaining a nation's political and economic control over another people or area. Uh, this poem is reflecting uh, suffering of Africa as a colonized country. As we all know that British, Britain uh, colonized so many countries, including Africa, India, and many, many more countries. And they ruled over them so for so many years. And uh, the main uh, reason that how they are colonized that all these countries it is that there is a myth between them that that western people are believed and they make other other people believe those who are not white or fair skin uh, people the myth was that uh, they are believe they believed that they they are fair because god made them from their own skin Rather, the, uh, the African people or Indian people or those who are not white people are uh, not fair or not uh, uh, black people because they are burned in the uh, in the fire of hell. That was the myth that Western people believe and they make other believe uh, also. And through that, they uh, state their superiority over them, uh, over them. So here in the poem, we find that... Uh, Western people is considering themselves superior, and and this all the whole poem is written in the conflict, or we can say contrast, or uh, to do uh, uh, we can say to do argument against that uh, concept that we are not inferior, we are as superior as you, or more than superior, uh, more superior than you. Gabriel Okara is showing. Uh, and when we find in the poem that uh, the laugh by Western people. Or we can say here, uh, the Gabriel Okara you, uh, use you for the Western people. Symbol symbolically, you is used there. He is not particularly directly mentioning Western people, but indirectly the, he is using. So when they are uh, uh, laughing on the dance, walk, songs on on the African people, it is showing a colonized mindset, mindset of Western people. That is what here we find. And this laughing is like, a mental torture for African people. It is, uh, it is like not torturing directly, but indirectly it is torturing and making them inferior or making them feel inferior. Uh, we find that uh, there is there is a poem. Uh, there is one line in the poem. You, we find that your laughter was ice block laughter, which is show, which is uh, directly showing that how it is mentally torturing them uh, to. African people. Now, fourth is nationalism. So, what is nationalism? So, as per uh, Mariam West Webster dictionary, we find that nationalism is a sense of national consciousness, ex uh, accelerating one nation above all other and placing primary emphasis on promotion of its culture and interest, interest as opposed to those who other nations or supranational uh, groups. In the poem uh, is reflecting poem's love for his nation that he wrote to uh, to defend his uh, culture or his uh, uh, nation against uh, the mindset of colonialism or we can say a Western mindset. And African people are here we find is considered as a close to nature and is uh, Western is considered as a more materialistic. So this nature is uh, uh, national is a symbolically. Uh, symbolism of African culture, or we can say nationality of African, where the material, materialism is a symbolically nationalism, we can say uh, symbolic uh, uh, representation of Western people. So this is their identities that is reflecting here in the poem. 
in the poem we find that uh, the line to support that how the nature is representing african nationality is uh, this fire of the eye of the eyes uh, of the sky the fire of the earth the fire of the air the fire of the seas and the rivers fishes animals trees and its thought your own inside so here in this line we we find use of many natural resources like sea eye of the sky uh, sky means sea uh, sun fire air river fish animal trees this all natural resource resources are representing that how african people are very close to nature and it is representing that african nationality or culture and we find that another another thing that we find about africa here in this poem it is like their history that one line that is indicating their history or their forefathers it is this so a meek wonder held your shadow and your and you whispered why so and i answered because my fathers and i i are owned by the living warmth of the earth throughout the naked feet so this is showing something background of african culture or history accepting uh, this there is a reference of magic dance which is reflecting superstitious nature of african people that they are believing such kind of magic dance or we can also consider uh, it as a their cultural dance now the fifth one is racism so here i have taken two uh, um, etymological reference of uh, racism that is given by stanford encyclopedia of philosophy that indicates that the word racism comes from the root race combined with the suffix ism which means a belief or doctrine and the definition of uh, racism is racism is a belief that race is fundamental determinant uh, determinant of human traits and cap uh, capacities and that racial differences produce an inherited superiority of particular race in the poem that we if we find that uh, the poem is all about the pain and suffering of black people that are colon colonized by under uh, by white uh, white colonizers so in poem we find that how uh, the white people are neglecting uh, the black people by uh, by neglecting all the acts of them for example their walk their dance their existence their insights their songs and everything by laughing on them so this laughing is also somewhere we find uh, the sarcastic and we find that their geographical locations are quite different so there uh, the the people who are living in western they are uh, obviously they are fair skin and this african people are black skin people and and though they are making this differences Uh, on a basis of we can say ritual religious basis that is the myth that i have talked about and uh, on a basis of their skins mm. so this all uh, thank you and these are my citations Yes, so my question is like uh, this whole poem uh, is about the sarcastic uh, approach of Western civilization, like how the uh, civilizers came and then uh, how they are valuing them higher than the uh, colonized people of Africa. So uh, by the poem, when we go through, we find that uh, by the using the repeated word "laugh." So do you think that uh, by writing of this poem, uh, poet is also attempting the same thing by sarcastic them and putting a poet's culture's value higher than them um this i have mentioned in my slide also and that this okar gabriel okara is trying to make their culture superior than like we can con uh, contrast argument we can do that on that that he is saying that uh, that cultures are same or similar but he himself un, we can say unconsciously or consciously making his culture trying to uh, show his culture higher than this western culture uh, in the po in this poem we find this line such lines that that is indicating these things like uh, it is say the 
Gabriel Okara is saying this, your laughter is ice, ice block laughter, while our laughter is not ice blocking laughter. So uh, he's trying to say that all the things that are that are belonging to us, like we are close to nature and our dance and our uh, our walk and our songs are more valuable than yours. Your uh, laughter and your like you are going to motor car and your materialistic way uh, are all the things that are making you uh, that are all the things are ice blocking. And while are all the things are uh, more valuable uh, than this. So this is how he is trying to uh, get it superior. But we can do it contrast argument uh, against that, that it is not rather, we can say that it is not uh, uh, that Okara is being judgmental, but more it is a kind of pain that they are suffered throughout the centuries um, uh, of being under them, Western people, and that all inferiority. My question is very similar to uh, this other question that, but uh, in uh, it, it is uh, superiority is the only way uh, uh, to concern uh, by this colonized people is is to showing as poet showing that uh, their culture is uh, superior. And as you also talked about superiority uh, several times during the presentation, but uh, it is the only uh, concern for uh, colonized people to show their superiority or any the other uh, concerns that in the poem. No, it is not the, we cannot say that it is the major concern of showing their superiority, but rather uh, they show their superiority because they want to make, uh, they want to uh, state that, or we can say, make their authority there in, in whichever country they are going. So it is very important to them to show that their superiority, because if they are not showing their superior uh, superiority, no one will follow them or no one, no one will, uh, uh, we can say take uh, what uh, their orders or everything so uh, we we all know that they are go that western people are uh, move around the world colonize the entire uh, the many so many countries because they want to do business that they want to earn so earning is the ba in the basic basis of this but they they has to prove their superiority over over other people otherwise no one will understand them or or rather we can say that no one will follow their uh, their instructions so that's why they are showing their superiority or religious reasons are also might be there So, uh, even if people are fighting against uh, the company or British Raj or any European uh, colonizers, but if there is a chance of doing a business, they would allow business. That was uh, very much at the core also.
Are you busy? Yes. Hello, I am Hina Basarvia. Today I am modeling the post colonialism in Gabriel Okara's poem, Piano and Drums. This is my personal information uh, about the poet. Uh, Gabriel Okara's full name is Gabriel Immortini uh, Brink Ben Okara. He was born in uh, April 21st, 1921, and he was died in 25th, uh, 2019, uh, Nigeria. He was a Nigerian poet, a novelist who was, has been translated in several languages. Uh, in uh, 1953, in his poem, The Call of Tibanan, won an advisory festival of art. Some, uh, some of his poems were uh, published in the influential uh, periodical Black Orpheus or by 1916. He was uh, recognized as an uh, accomplished literary craftsman. He was uh, called as a Nigerian. Now he is known for the, his celebra uh, celebrated poem, uh, the, uh, the Fisherman Invocation, Once Upon a Time, You Laughed and Laughed and Laughed and Piano and Drum. Most of his uh, manuscripts were lost during the Nigerian Civil War. Okaras think that when traditional African culture faced the European culture, then it is uh, reshaped and altered the post-colonial African man. The, this hybridity is one of two different and opposing cultures con confuse the black identity and make it uh, superior. He wrote about the cultural hybridity and loss of identity. In this poem, uh, we can see that the, uh, the two cultures are represented through the uh, musical instrument that is the drum uh, represent of African, uh, African uh, the culture and the piano is represent of the uh, Western uh, culture. Thus, uh, the idea of post-colonialism, that is the uh, post-colonial, post-colonialism is uh, represent the aftermath of Western colonialism. The term, the term can also be used to describe the uh, concurrent uh, project of reclaim and rethinking the history and agency of people subordinate under the various form of imperialism. That is, uh, the the colonizer are uh, the uh, uh, suffering from the uh, the colonized pe uh, colonizer people. It shows that effect on the native people who have been subordinate by the colonial rules in different part of the world, uh, resulting in one of biggest chapter of history of mankind. In the 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 post colonialism, the main figures like uh, Homi Ke Baba. Uh, Friends, Fanon, Edward say uh, we highlight the pioneer of this theory. The post-colonial African literature deals with the tradition, ruthlessness, liberation, racism, displacement, culture, and colonialism. As a result of colonialism in uh, Africa, the the country whiteness a uh, radical transformations and uh, in the society. The the. Uh, the post-colonialism is a poem of a piano and drum. In the in the poem, piano and dr drums is a, a the poetic person uh, depict the, and portrays the contrast between the traditional lifestyle. That is the piano also represent the life of a uh, uh, modern world, and uh, drum is also represent the lifestyle of Africans. Uh, and uh, he showed the purity of African culture that interference by the colonizer and European civilization. In this poem also portrayed the how the colonizers uh, uh, and European uh, civilization are affected of the uh, African culture. And uh, uh, he uh, thinks that the sound of drum create a quickness of action and agility. He symbolized the dr drum to the life of traditional African and piano to the European civilization. Uh, in the, uh, the line of when at break of day at the riverside, uh, hear jungle drums, telegraphy, the mystic rhythm, urgent roll like bleeding flesh, speaking of primary youth. This uh, line uh, represent the, the po poet, uh, the, uh, the remember of uh, his uh, youth, youthful day. And he, uh, the, in this, uh, the line, the, uh, the represent of the Afri African lifestyle, that is the way the poet is very connected with the nature. And here is poet has used the heavy beat of the drum to show the 
primal youth. The memory of his native land is full of ac action, as shown by the words such as snarling, bonds, and beating. The word telegraphy represents that poet is no longer part of the beating of the drum. And at, uh, at the once I am walking simple path with no innovation. It represents that uh, the poet are walking is a simple path. That is the African life. That people uh, that is the African peoples are not be uh, uh, very developed uh, like uh, the uh, European uh, development. That uh, in this uh, here poet glorification of childhood run throughout the above lines. However, the path the poet show as right now was simple and without any innovation. But identified is the was moment of maxim blessing stat. In the scene, then developed from the lap of mother to process of learn learning how to walk with the fact metaphorically means how to stand on on, on your feet in the life of come. Uh, in he, then he wonderfully expressed how to baby capture the image of green leaves and white flowers through his innocent eyes and store in the immature yet developing brain. It is a present uh, through the li line of the groping heart in a green leaves and white flower plushery. That means the poet are represent the youthness. Uh, so you, it's a feeling of the Africa is like a mother line. And, uh, and the, in the another uh, develop uh, this, uh, it's a show that in uh, innocence and connected with the Africans and lost in the uh, labyrinth of the incomplex, uh, incomplexes is the end in the middle of the phrase as the, the, the dagger point. This piano symbolizes the vast, their culture and way. This piano has suiting music for European, but uh, for him is a distasteful. The word uh, dagger point is in, uh, surely that uh, the culture after influence of the Western. In the Mikhil uh, Bakhtin state that the hybrid is uh, on not only a double voice and double act, uh, accented, but is also a double language for, for in they are no, not only uh, two individual consciousness, two voices, two ascent, as there are social linguistic consciousness, two epoch that come together and consciously fight it out on the territory of alterance. In, in this show that the, the and, uh, and I lost in the morning mist, uh, mist of an age at the riverside, keep wandering in the mystic rhythm of jungle drum and concerto. This line, uh, the show that the poet, uh, end of the poem, that poet poet is lost, uh, the, the, uh, the loss that uh, in a mixing of both uh, the uh, both the cultural that is uh, wandering to endlessly music of two instruments melt around him. And so my uh, mingles and two culture, the poem ends without the end of uh, delimity condition of poet's mind. Thus the poem piano and uh, drums, uh, we can uh, vividly visualize the culture uh, dichotomy between the primitive culture and European culture is a beautifully symbolic uh, present through the uh, two musical instrument is the like the piano and the drums. And this is your citation. Thank you. So uh, there was the mentioned about the factor of hybridity. So hybridity is the only factor which is responsible for the loss of identity or uh, you find other factors for uh, that uh, the loss of identity. And, and uh, hybridity is one factor is a portrait. Uh, I, I tell that the, uh, the in the poem, the, the both, uh, the both uh, culture are represent as a through the a musical instrument is the piano is the represent of the western uh, western uh, western uh, and uh, the uh, drums is a represent of the african uh, tradition and in uh, in the find that the, the it's a 
here is a uh, represent only through musical uh, musical instrument through the uh, hybridity of cultural but uh, in in we in, in we can see that the many factors are uh, differentiate to both the cultures like the the style that is uh, and uh, the one is the uh, african the it's poet are explained that the african culture are uh, connected with the nature and another uh, the eastern culture are, are uh, um, connected with the machines um, and um, mechanical life that is the very differential factor Can you explain more how post-colonialism implied in the poem? For example, how uh, what are the uh, factors of post-colonialism that are the, that are in the poem? Yes. Uh, first, uh, uh, in the post-colonialism, that study of cultural uh, traditions and uh, the the peoples are suffering from the uh, the the colonize uh, colon colonizer in in this poem the poet also explained uh, explain the 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 the, colo the the colonizer are uh, colonized by the uh, african peoples in 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 the po in the poet uh, the uh, explain through the in a musical instrument but uh, in this fact uh, the uh, the poet also stand that the the african cultures are uh, are uh, connected with nature Truth and it's a very simple to understand. But uh, uh, the poet, uh, poet is a uh, poet uh, uh, in another say uh, the third and fourth stanza. He uh, explains uh, such things that is uh, the civil uh, in the European westernized uh, the tradition are very different uh, from the African tradition. And uh, the poet are uh, telling that. The the except any of uh, the tradition, it's a uh, but acceptance, but uh, not a uh, mingle of both the the traditions each other. So my name is Hirva Pandya. So my name is Irva Pandya. Today I will be talking about the feminist prospect in Petals of Blood. This is my personal information. Points to ponder about the author, novel, about feminism, history of feminism in Kenya, because this novel is setting, set in the Kenya. Feminist prospect in the novel, conclusion and work citation. About the author, Bugia Thiongo, original name James Thiongo Bugia, born January 5th, 1938, Kenyan writer who was considered East Africa's leading novelist. 
His popular works are Whip Not Child was the first major novel in the colonialism in Africa. Bugia represent, presented his idea on literature, culture and politics in numerous essays and lectures, which were collected in Homecoming, Writers in Politics, Burial of a Pain, Moving the Center, Politics of Language in African Literature. Bugia argued uh, African language literature as the only authentic voice for African and stated his own intention of writing only in Kikuyu or Kisawahi from the point on. About the novel, the novel revolves around the three men and one woman. The four friends reveal different aspects of their history to each other, Pisimil, just as their families had godly explained the past to them. Petals of Blood is a novel Kenyan author by Gugia Thiongo, published in 1977. The novel tells the story of four characters, Munira, Karega, Wanja, and Abdullah, whose lives intersect in a small town in Kenya. It deals with social and economical problems in East Africa after independence, particularly the continued explanation of peasant and workers by foreign business interest interested and greedy indigenous bourgeois bourgeois what is feminism according to ken Chuchi university feminism is interdisciplinary approach to issues of equality and based on gender gender expression gender identity sex and sexuality as understood through social theories and political activism Historically, feminism has involved from the critical examination of inequality between the sexes to a more nuanced focus on the social and performative construction of gender and sexuality. According to Merriam-Webster dictionary, feminism is belief in advocacy of political, economic, and social equality of sexes expressed especially through organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. According to Burkett and Brunel Lura, feminism, the belief in the social, economic, and political equality of sexes, although largely or, or, or originating in the West, feminism is manifested worldwide and represented by various institutions committed to activity on behalf of women's rights and interest. According to Cambridge Dictionary, feminism is the belief that women should be allowed that same rights, power, and opportunity as men be treated in the same way. According to Women's Development International Agency, feminism is all about gender having equal rights and opportunity. It's about respecting diverse women experiences, identity, knowledge, and strength. Waves of feminism. There are four waves of feminism according to Pacific University. First wave feminism took place in the late 19th and early 20th century, emerging out of environment, urban industrialism, and liberal social politics. Second wave, the second wave began in 1960 and continued into 90s. This wave unfolded in the context of anti-war and civil rights movements and growing self-consciousness of variety of minority groups around the world. Third wave, the third wave of feminism began in mid 90s and was informed by post-colonial and post-modern thinking. In the face, many constructs were destabilized, including the notion of universal womanhood, body, gender, sexuality, and heteronormivity. History of feminism in Kenya. African women were so active members in the struggle against colonial powers, were also fighting for better reproductive rights. African women movement reflects the cultural, social, and political organization of the society in Africa. This evi many evidences have suggested that the African history contains various examples of violence against women and male dominated. These evidences recommended 
that the african women movement reflects tradition of organization that have categorized spiritual and material life in africa women in kenya were well organized in the work parties and in many women were managed as numerous group wives and ladies association and administrated through women council african women usually installing western european ideologies of home life offering training in related skill this women's movement in kenya has faced many challenges to gain equality in political social economic aspect of the society due to the patriarchal nature of the kenyan society feminist prospect in the novel there is one character who is central protagonist female protagonist is the vanja as observed by ahmed jassim mohammed in his research article that uh, the author views that colonialism obviously and post colonialism are responsible for oppressing african women he clearly shows that the problem of patriarchy and its impact on women pre colonialism colonialism and post colonialism society through the novel the author in his novel petals of blood emphasizes the exploitation of african women on the basis of race class and gender he shows that women are active and love farm work vanja the grand daughter of nyakin yuva wanders around ilmorog with her grandmother nyakin yuva during the sub subsidence of the rain gugia describes the vanja is as an active woman who forms a group which called which called nadim and nyakin yuva to cultivate a weed the land the purpose to the to is to work group and help other women to increase their efficiency in the work the author draws both positive and negative aspect of the female characters and doesn't create unrealistic and fanciful female character the negative positive points which builds vanja's personality are clearly described in the text for example vanja hears the voice of children as they suffer due to starvation she feels wound inside her smart shows sharply that tears would press against her eyelids she feels as excluding love for them and she would have liked at such moments to embrace and give milk to all little ones on the earth author clearly emphasized the worthy side of his female character in the telling of vanja's character he brings out her kindness resourceful mental strength and loving nature conclusion through the reading of the novel it can be observed that the fact woman can be mother politician socialist and educator provider of family at the same time women like nyakin yuma and vanja struggle hard against colonialism and they strongly desire to curb oppression and exploitation of kenyan society the novel present feminist critic of the gender inequality that is perceivedness in kenyan society these are my work, work citation thank you So my question is how Vanja differs from other African yes. characters. Vanja is different from the other African characters. If we study the character of New Ego, she is suppressed from the male dominance, and Vanja is a bold woman who is first fall in first fall in love with Kimeria, who was a bourgeoisie of the. Um, Kenya, and then she fall she fall in love with Karega. So Vanja is different from the other African woman. She is not suppressed by anyone. A few things which everybody can also keep in mind that. uh she has uh, referred in her slides that according to pacific university 
Yes, you yes. refer to uh, this. According to Pacific University, Oregon, there are four waves of feminism, feminism that yes. you said. There are lots of uh, capitalization problem in that yes. sentence also. Yes. University P, U, O should be capitalized. But when you see that website, when I check that website, uh, let me uh, share that screen. This site you have uh, referred to, uh, let it get displayed. Pacific University, yes. Oregon, four ways of feminism. Sir, when I was searching for feminist perspective in this novel, there is uh, multi three sites are there, but uh, this article is same hmm. by same. Uh, Research scholar. Who? Who? The research scholar is name. Name. Ahmad Jassim. Hmm. Ahmad Jassim Mohammed Azami. The same article is on yes. Pacific University site also? No, no, not Pacific site. Uh, okay. then? In the feminist perspective of, perspective of the novel. No, but this website you have... Yes, sir, I have cited this website. Huh. Pacific so, University. Hmm. So then that, uh, that uh, article is not very important. Ahmed Jassim Muhammad's article. So how will you evaluate? Whose is better? Yes. How will you do? What is your parameter? That is a part of research methodology. That you have five sources. Yes. Now, which is qualitative? Ahmed Jassim's, or here you get this. This is the another one that you have said. Yes, sir, I am. Yes, yeah. this, so is this is assistant lecturer in Iraq, and uh, here is a professor yes. of uh, Center of Gender Equity from Pacific University. Yes. So, do you think that assistant professor in Iraq is more worthy than this? No, sir, it's not more worthy. So, why do you say no? This is that part, no? this, that, this is the activity that you have to do when you go to internet in search of material. If you fail to do this, then uh, we are dumb people. We don't know whom to rely, how to rely, why to rely, and use that resources to build our interpretation. So here also, like if you say Pacific, uh, if you have a clear cut name of the person, why don't you say according to Rampton? Can you say that? Do you see that? Yes. So that's what I was talking about in this. So after listening to that article of BBC or Nalanda, you should have corrected that. Whatever you have written, you cannot correct. But when you speak, you can correct. Do you think yes. presence of mind? What yes. is presence of mind? That on the spot, we humans can keep on correcting ourselves. So things are written, it is fine, but you can correct now that, well, I have written Pacific, but, uh, but this person, I should yes. have written, and according to so-and-so uh, professor, uh, this I say. Yes. So th these are things very simple, but uh, th that matters a lot. People judge your work based on what linguistic markers you use, which language you use. That is what we are telling time and again. Uh, but I don't know why it is not reaching to you people. <laughs> It is not reaching, no? because within 10 minutes also you are not able to apply that uh, into your learning. So uh, that is, I think, a huge problem, which we will have to see either there is a problem with us, that we are not able to guide you properly or teach you properly what to do, why such simple things are not changing your habit of doing the things. So that is uh, the concern also. But then four ways, uh, again, you have to see that is Elaine Shoulder who very importantly said about this towards uh, women's poetics. 
So that also, I don't know why you are not able to reach to when you talk about waves. This, uh, that is the original source which people uh, refer to. So that is still uh, some problem is there which I think uh, you will have to work on uh, uh, everybody, uh, those who find this problem of not still able to work out in a proper way uh, to see this because now I don't know how to teach you. Uh, this is the last semester and last day also. So uh, still uh, satisfactorily things should come uh, is not coming uh, here. Okay, uh, yes. Uh, Question. Yeah, my question is in the poem, how does Vanja suffer from that culture? Yes, Vanja is suffer from her culture because the uh, Kenya was colonized country, and in the colonized country, there is uh, no rights for women. But uh, as Vanja is different from the other. African woman, so she she is uh, not much suffered from his her culture. Okay, so uh, uh, so with this last one morning session, your presentation things are ending huh, with this. Uh, so let us just remind you the coming days, eh, what you are supposed to do. Now, I think your top priority will be department work. Uh, any other things now you will not take. If you take any other work or any other uh, family things or any other thing, then also see that these works are done and then you spare time for them. Eh? Not at the cost of what work you are supposed to complete. Eh? So that is very important that your priority should be to concentrate on uh, in this week uh, uh, for the department works which are pending, which are incomplete. So uh, let me share this screen and we'll record this also so you can get a reminder and later on also you can uh, see uh, if you want to uh, watch this part in case you forget uh, the thing. So according to our schedule uh, that we have planned uh, what we are supposed to do. Last month we shared the schedule uh, with everybody. Uh, in that uh, earlier you were working on your dissertation chapters uh, from February 16 to 28 and then you submitted one draft of uh, that. Then you prepared a seminar paper, national level seminar and that also you have presented uh, on 5th of uh, March. Uh, that uh, work is done. Uh, let it get displayed here so we can see here also. Uh, and then uh, we had this uh, three days of uh, our presentations on 7th, 9th and 10th. Okay? So that also we have reached uh, today, uh, the 10th of uh, March uh, uh, for the last presentation on African literature. Now uh, 10 to 16, now your next uh, important task which will assemble uh, here will be on 16th, uh, 16th, we will have digital portfolio demonstration. So where you will be demonstrating your digital portfolio to semester uh, two students, the way you were demonstrated by the senior students. So uh, that will be in your memory and that is what you have to do on that day. So that will be, uh, so coming days in case anything is pending uh, in digital portfolio, then that you have to complete uh, that complete everything that is uh, there you are suggested in various meetings also uh, so i don't think you require anything to be told in case there is any doubt you can ask that what you have to do if uh, things are not clear don't hesitate to ask uh, what you have to do in digital portfolio demonstration so that will be on 16th so that work you have to do then 18th we have annual day an annual day is also organized by uh, semester four students. You are organizing that. So several things are to be done. Very importantly, uh, committee leaders uh, uh, presentations will be there. Various committees we have and whatever work is done, not done, uh, photographs, charts, uh, whatever is required for your presentation that you have to uh, present. So that work also the leaders will have to do uh, during these days and keep your slides ready. You may have to collect several data from semester two students also. 
so then they will be coming from 11 to uh, 15 uh, in the coming days their presentations will begin from tomorrow uh, from 11 to 15 here uh, is the schedule of that class also so uh, that time you can ask them anything that you required any information that you require if they are not sharing in whatsapp or other thing you can come here and while they are sitting you can tell me so i can ask them face to face that this information these people are asking for many days why are you not providing so that way you can take that opportunity to let me know that uh, in the in the slot that they are given if they are not providing quickly because for your uh, digital even for memorabilia you may be uh, requiring several information uh, to compile uh, the creative work, critical work. We want everybody's contribution uh, in that. So nobody should say that, well, I will not give. At least one thing everybody will have to give, whether it is poem or a painting or a photograph of your or your critical writing on the blog. If nothing, then one of the blogs you can give, which you think is good enough uh, for your digital portfolio. Uh, so that you have to give. So in case semester two students are not giving or not replying, then you have five days to work with them uh, then certificates needs to be prepared also so this work is very important in the coming days that you will have to uh, complete so remember this and start working uh, in a similar way the classroom work if it is not done then that also you start completing also okay, okay so with this uh, we end our session for the day